Hi everyone. In this part, we are going to go over pathology of uh, disorders of stomach. This is part two. We're going to go over acute gastritis and gastropathy. Um, I'm Mariam Peju, and this is my information, email, and my Twitter handle. So the outline of gastric disorders is that in part one, we talked about normal histology of stomach. This is part two, so we will cover acute gastritis and gastropathy. Part three will go over chronic gastritis, part four, hypertrophic uh, gastropathies, and then part five, we go over polyps and tumor. So this is acute gastritis and gastropathy. Let's go over terminology. So gastritis is inflammation of gastric mucosa. So itis is always means inflammation. Acute gastritis or active gastritis is when neutrophils are present and there you have acute inflammation. These terms active and acute has been changed uh, has been used interchangeably in um, the gastric or in the gastrointestinal um, disorder. So whenever you hear word active, it means there is some active injury happening. And most commonly for pathologists, it means that you have neutrophils and you have acute inflammation. Chronic gastritis, on the other hand, means you have chronic inflammation. In pathology, it translates to you, you have lymphocytes and plasma cells. Those are when you have inflammation for a longer period of time and you have lymphocytes in plasma cells. In particular, helicobacter pylori gastritis is considered a type of chronic gastritis, but in reality, you basically have active chronic gastritis. So for chronic gastritis, it means you have chronicity, chronic um, in, uh, inflammation, which is lymphocytes and plasma cells, and for active, you have neutrophils. So in helicobacter pylori gastritis, you see both. Gastropathy is when inflammatory cells are rare, but there is reactive mucosal changes present. We'll go over all these. Let's look at mechanism of gastric injury and protection. So in normal situation, you have some damaging factors in your stomach, which is your acid, which is the acid that's produced in the stomach and peptic enzyme. These can damage the mucosa. However, you have some protective factors. You have the mucus on top that protects the epithelium. You have bicarbonate secretion into the mucus, which protects it against acid and enzyme. You have the blood flow, which helps to get rid of some of these damaging factors there. And you have epithelial barrier which again helps with defense mechanism. You have regenerative capacity, so it, with the slight damage, it will regenerate. And you have prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are the factors that really help to um, increase production of all the defense mechanism. So this is a normal situation. When you have an injury, you have like H. pylori infection, NSAIDs, tobacco, cigarettes, alcohol, gastric hyperacidity, or the reflux happening, duodenal contents can come to the stomach. These all can, all can cause injury. So it will injure the um, mucosa. And you also can have some uh, impaired defense mechanism. There are some factors can then affect your impaired mechanism. You have ischemia, you have shock, and again, NSAIDs can do both. Remember that NSAIDs is on both parts. It can um, cause the um, impaired mechanism defense. And there you have erosion, ulceration or damage. So in the beginning, you have some sort of acute inflammation, then some erosion happening, some inflammatory cells are here, like these are neutrophils. And then you have full-blown ulcer. The entire mucosa is gone if this has been going on for longer. So milder form of injury and then leads to ulceration, which the entire mucosa is done. It's gone with necrosis, acute inflammation, you can have granulation tissue formation, fibrosis is happening, all of these. What is, let's go over uh, etiologies of gastric injury. So NSAIDs, as we talked about, both can be 
having a direct injury to the epithelium and also can cause um, decrease in defense mechanism. So basically it, it inhibits cyclo, cyclooxygenase dependent synthesis of prostaglandins E2 and I2. And we said the prostaglandins uh, are helping the defense mechanisms. Basically stimulates all the defense mechanism, mucus production, bicarbonate, phospholipid secretion, blood flow, epithelial restitution, and also it caused decrease in acid production. Uremic patients have inhibition of gastric uh, bicarbonate transporters. And also remember, in older individuals, you have reduced mucin and bicarbonate secretion, so they're more prone to gastric injuries. Another etiology of gastric injury is high altitude. Basically, in high altitude, you have decreased oxygen delivery, which will uh, dam it can be damaging to the gastric mucosa. Ingestion of harsh chemicals, alcohol, NSAIDs, chemoradiation can also cause direct injury to the mucosa. And bile acid. Bile acid, it inhibits the mucosal defense mechanism, the mucus bicarbonate barrier. So when you have reflux of duodenal contents into the stomach, you will have injury. So let's see histology of active gastritis. So this is a normal gastric mucosa. You see gastric foveal or epithelium. Please review the normal histology of stomach. So you're familiar with that. You have the epithelial cell, you have your muscularis mucosa layer. And whenever you have active gastritis, you can see a lot of neutrophils, a lot of uh, inflammatory cells damaging the surface. You can see the surface does not look very happy. They're not much mucin left or uh, in the surface and a lot of inflammation. This is a higher power picture and you can see a lot of neutrophils and uh, pets and also in between lamina propria, in between epithelium. So these are active and active gastritis. There's numerous neutrophils there. So Whenever this active gastritis goes on a little bit longer, you can have active erosive gastritis. What do we mean by that? So you have normal gastric mucosa. This is normal again. And you can see the surface is completely gone here. It's all damaged with mixed up inflammatory cells with neutrophils and uh, inflammation. Histology of gastric ulcers. This is again, normal gastric mucosa. You can see multiple fragments of gastric mucosa and lots of you know, ulceration. This is focal area of ulceration. The mucosa is completely gone. This is higher power picture. You can see the entire mucosa is gone. Epithelium is gone. You have necrosis and inflammatory cells. Stress-related mucosal injury uh, can happen in um, almost 75% of critically ill patients. They can have some uh, visible gastritis during endoscopy, often within the three days of the starting of their illness. Trauma, shock, sepsis, uh, extensive burns, intracranial disease, and also major surgeries, serious uh, medical disease, and physiologic stress can also cause gastric mucosal injuries. There are some specific names that yeah, has been used, and this is basically based on location and clinical association. So you can have curling ulcers that happen in proximal duodenum is associated with severe burns and trauma. Basically, you have hypovolemia that leads to ischemia and injury. So curling ulcer, often you see it in the duodenum based on location, and clinical association is burn and trauma. Cushing ulcers is often in, can be in gastric, duodenal, or esophageal ulcers, ulcers uh, mostly in patients with intracranial disease. They have high incidence of perforation in these. And it's thought to be uh, due to vagal stimulation in the intracranial disease. So it leads to increased acid production and then damaging the uh, mucosa and causing ulcers. Moving to reactive gastropathy, when inflammatory cells are rare or absent. 
The causes is NSAID skin causes, alcohol, bile, stress-induced injury. So basically, in a reactive gastropathy, this is a, a picture of normal gastric mucosa. You have gastric epithelium, you have your um, fundic type mucosa, not much inflammation is happening. Here, you see that the top surface is still intact. It's not the damaged. How, uh, it's intact, but it is damaged. You see the loss of the... Uh, the uh, gastric foveolar, the vacuoles of mucin on top. You can see corkscrewing, hyperplasia of the gastric foveolar mucosa, and there is a corkscrew appearance. Look at this, the corkscrew, and you can see it exactly here happening. So this is corkscrewing. Sometimes you can see a little bit of congestion of blood vessels, edema, very rare inflammatory cells. You can argue with me, there are a little bit plasma cells of inflammation there. Yes, you can see uh, rare inflammatory cells as well. You also have seen fibromuscular bundles going up, but uh, you know, basically the appearance would be like a corkscrew. So in summary, gastritis is whenever you have inflammation of gastric mucosa. Gastropathy is when inflammatory cells are rare or absent. Acute gastritis slash active gastritis is inflammation with neutrophils. You have acute inflammation. And a lot of factors can cause this. So could be any agent or a disease that interferes with gastric mucosal protective mechanism. So it's very nonspecific. You have to look at the clinical scenario to see what is causing active gastritis in your patient. Then thank you. This is the end of part two, and this is a picture of uh, Chicago in our neighborhood. Uh, thank you for your attention.